Hello, this is Math 280, Multivariable Calculus. I'm Professor Wheatley. Our goal in this course will be to extend the notions of the derivative and the integral into three dimensions and higher. So we'll start off talking about how this differs from single variable calculus. We're used to working with the xy plane in single variable, where we have quadrants. So for example, Quad 1 is where you have x and y both greater than 0. Quads 2, 3, and 4 depend on the signs of x and y as well. So from this point on, we'll refer to this as the plane, or 2 space. So what then is 3 space? Well, it has an x, a y, and a z-axis, right? Space is what we call it from now on, so when I refer to space, I'm talking about three space. And it's divided into not quadrants, but octants. So, for example, the first octant, first octant is where all the signs of x, y, and z are greater than zero. So x greater than zero, y greater than zero, z greater than zero. And what I've drawn up here are the positive x, y, and z axes. If I wanted to have the negative axes in there as well, I would just extend them out like such. And the dashed lines indicate that they are negative in this case, but they would go on infinitely, just like the positive axes would. One thing to note, the, the first octant has a name because it's all positive coordinates. The other octants aren't really named similarly. There's no way to really name them systematically, but it's not that important to, to keep that in mind. Okay, so let's go ahead and erase the negative axes and work only with the positive axes for a moment. So if I want to put uh, some coordinate points on these axes, well, if I put a point here, that point on the x-axis would have coordinates x, 0, 0. And this is the positive x-axis, so x here would be greater than zero itself. Similarly, I could put a point up here. It would be zero, y, zero. And a point up here would be zero, zero, z. And so these are the positive x, y, and z axes. And what's important to note here is that these x and y axes, if I extend them out to the negative side as such, they form an exact replica of the x, y plane over here. So here is where x and y are both positive. That is a copy of quadrant one. The other quadrants are similarly designed. So this is a copy of the x, y plane, and the z-axis extends straight upwards. Or if we thought about it in terms of the x, y plane being this flat surface here, the z would extend out of the whiteboard as such and also go behind the whiteboard for the negative z-axis. A helpful viewpoint so a helpful viewpoint here might be the following. If it's still not quite clear what's going on, if I draw the x, y, and z axes as such, think about it like this. So here's the floor of some room. And over here, we have, say, a right wall and a left wall. So here, the floor meets the corner of the wall. The wall extends up, the floor lays flat, the walls extend uh, perpendicular to the floor along the axes. That's one way to view the first octant. So hopefully this is, this is clearer now. Let's look at an example and see what's going on now of how I might graph an equation in space. So if I want to graph x equals 3 in space, how is this different from graphing it in the plane, or two-dimensional space? Well, in the plane, x equals 3 was a vertical line. So here's two-dimensional space. There's the plane. x equals 3 was that vertical line right there. There's the point 3, 0. So this is x equals 3 in the plane. Well, how is it different in 3 space? Well, start off with our coordinate axes. 
This is a plane in space. So x equals 3 is a plane in space. Not to be confused with the plane. Right? The plane is two space. This is just a plane in three space. So make sure you understand that. And so what does it contain? It contains all points that look like 3, comma y, comma z. Just like this vertical line contained all points of the forms 3, comma y, where we let y range over all real numbers, the same thing happens here. Only we're allowing both y and z to range over all real numbers. So somewhere down along here, there's the point 3, comma 0, comma 0. Right? And that's where the plane x equals 3 is going to cut the x-axis. So it's going to be perpendicular to the x-axis at 3, comma 0, comma 0. And then it's going to encompass all y and z values for all real numbers, so the plane's going to run parallel to the y and the z axes. Here's what I mean. I'm going to draw my plane rectangularly, and notice when I'm, when I'm drawing it, I'm drawing two lines parallel to the y axis. So there's y, there's x, there's z. I'm drawing these two lines parallel to y, and I also want two lines parallel to z, something like that. I'm going to kind of connect them up. And so that doesn't look very good at this point. One of the tricks to drawing in three space is to make things look three dimensional. So my, my, my goal now is going to be to sort of erase enough things that this looks like it's actually in three space. So this plane exists here. It cuts the x-axis at this point here, and it runs parallel to y and z. So all of this stuff here, all of these line segments that form my coordinate axes, these are all running behind the plane. So I'm going to sort of indicate that by dash lines to indicate they are running behind the plane. And the plane oops, is in the foreground of the shot. Right? So there's the plane. There's the axes behind the plane. Here is where it cuts the x-axis, perpendicular to the x-axis here, so it forms a right angle and it runs parallel to y and z. And even though I've drawn this rectangularly, this plane would extend infinitely far in the z direction and infinitely far in the y direction. So imagine it as, a, as an infinitely tall, infinitely long rectangle that has uh, no thickness at all to it. It simply cuts at one point here. And so again, we've drawn this to look like a three-dimensional. It doesn't look too shabby. OK. And Let's note down here that this is parallel to both y and z axes. And that's infinitely long. OK. So that was an easy enough example. Let's try a little harder one. We can graph one plane with a single equation in space very easily. Let's try two. So let's graph the pair of equations, x equals 2 and y equals 1 in space. And we'll give ourselves some room to work here. So it should make sense that immediately both of these form planes. They're no different than x equals 3. There's nothing different going on here. But what do two planes do when they're on the same coordinate axes? Let's take a look at that. So we'll draw the coordinate axes, x, y, z. The plane x equals 2, well, we'll sort of estimate the point 2, 0, 0 is down there, probably. So there's 2, 0, 0. So this plane is going to cut the x-axis here at that point. And the plane y equals 1, well, we'll say that the point 0, 1, 0 is right there. So the plane y equals 1 will cut the y-axis here. 
So again, I'll draw my planes. I'll make two lines parallel to the y-axis, two lines parallel to the z-axis. Draw on that, not as well as it could look, maybe. So that looks better. So there's the plane x equals 2, perpendicular to the x axis at the point 2, 0, 0, parallel to the z axis, parallel to the y axis. And we can sort of draw things to make it look like there's some 3D going on here. So that's behind that. Everything else looks all right. So there's one of our planes. All right, what about the other one? Well, this time, the plane y equals 1 is cutting the y-axis, so the other two sides are parallel to x and z. So I need sides that are parallel to x, and I need sides that are parallel to z. So something like that, all right, okay? And so again, we can sort of make this look like it's three-dimensional. Uh, so let's see here. So we can kind of dash that up and we'll dash that. Uh, and that doesn't look right. So uh, there we go. That sort of looks like, there we go. That looks a little better, right? So there we have two planes. Well, what do two planes do when they intersect one another? Well, think about this. So all of the points that solve this pair of equations, they all have x-coordinate 2, they have y-coordinate 1, and we're allowed to range the z-coordinate through all real numbers. So we're fixing x and y, and we're allowing z to range through all real numbers. So what's going to happen here is we're going to have a line, right? So let's see here. How do I want to draw this to look a little bit better? Um, well, so we're going to have a line uh, where all coordinates look like above. So let's see if I can't make this look a little bit more like what I have here. So let's draw this out a little bit. So we'll sort of extend that out. Uh, so we'll sort of extend this out like that. There we go. It looks Decent. So there's, there's your plane. There's two zero zero. And let's see, where do I want to put? Uh, so, and sometimes if things don't look right the first time around, you can sort of play around with them and, and they look a little bit better if you redraw. But the important thing was that we saw what was happening, and the redrawing is not so very vital. So. And then this line here, this is the line we're talking about. So this is the line uh, right there. And then you can kind of see here. So where do I want to put my axes? So let's call this. So we'll call that x, and we'll call that z, and we'll call that y. And that looks decent. So uh, this is much more clearly explained um, in the in the uh, notes that will be uh, accompanying the course, but there's the line you need. Okay, so every point on that line is of this form. The line goes on infinitely forever because these planes go on infinitely forever, and they look like that. Okay, one more thing to talk about with 3D coordinate systems. So planes intersecting together is fine. One other thing that comes up quite often is spheres. So spheres in space. And the nice thing about spheres is they are completely analogous to circles in two dimensions. So recall, a circle is set of all points equidistant, same distance, from a central point. That's a two-dimensional definition. This is 2D. A sphere is exactly the same thing in 3D. So sphere analogous in 3D. The only thing that's changing is we are adding in a Z point to the sphere.
So here's a sphere. There's a circle, the back of the circle, the front of the circle, decent enough. You have some central point, P naught, right? So P naught, which has coordinates X naught, Y naught, Z naught, is the center of the sphere, right? And then we ask ourselves, well, what about a point on the circle's outside edge? So here's a point P. So a point P lies on the sphere if the following is true. If the distance from P naught to P is equal to some constant A. So this constant radius is A. So this A is the radius of the sphere. And it's constant. Constant, right? Just like a circle is. A circle has a constant radius, so does a sphere, right? And so a point P lies on the sphere if and only if the distance from that point to the central point is a constant radius A. Okay, so what does that mean in terms of equations? Well, we have the equation the distance from P naught to P equals A. Well, the 2D distance formula is well known to us. The 3D formula is completely analogous. We're only adding in a Z value. Nothing's changing here. So, what we have then is the 3D distance formula should look identical to the 2D distance formula except we've added in this Z minus Z naught component over here. That's the only change from the 2D distance formula. And that's equal to some constant A. And so, well, this isn't that nice. The square root makes it kind of nasty. We may as well square both sides. If we do that, we get something that we see often. I've squared both sides, gotten A squared, gotten rid of the square root here. This is something that we'll see frequently, and we should learn to recognize that as the equation of a sphere. OK, let's look at an example here a minute. So what I want here is describe uh, sets of points given by the equations or inequalities. All right. So first up, x minus 1 squared y plus 2 squared plus z squared less than or equal to 3. Right away, we should recognize this as looking a lot like this over here. We have an x minus an x naught and a y minus a y naught and a z minus a z naught and something a squared. There's not equality, there's inequality. That's no problem, though. It just tells us uh, whether or not the interior of the sphere is contained. So what's our center here? Well, our center from our formula over here, x naught, y naught, z naught being the center, looks like 1, negative 2, 0. Notice this is y plus 2. The sphere's equation is always given in terms of y minus y naught. So remember, y minus negative 2 is the same as y plus 2. That's why this is negative 2 in the center. 0 here, z minus 0 squared is the same as z squared, right? That's the center point of our sphere. And then, well, a squared is 3. Well, certainly a is a radius, so it has to be positive. Therefore, a must equal square root 3. Right? If a squared is 3, a is positive, a must equal square root 3. Okay? And so the last thing to address is this less than or equal to. Well, this is saying I want all the points, x, y, and z, such that their distance from this center point is less than or equal to 3, right? So this is a sphere of radius 
square root 3 centered at 1, negative 2, 0. And think of it like this. So here's your sphere. Here's your center. Here's your radius. Well, I want all the points that are either at this given radius or less than it. So I want all the points not only on the outside of the sphere, the actual ball itself, but inside it. So this has got to be together with its interior. In other words, if I shaded in all the points, I would shade inside the sphere as well, and that would give me a solid ball. So again, not only do I want the points on the exterior of the sphere, the actual sphere itself, I want the points inside the sphere here because of a less than or equal to. Okay, so that's a solid ball there. All right, let's look at another one. So let's see here. Uh, x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals 1. Okay, well, the center here is very easy. 0, 0, 0. There's nothing being subtracted from any of the x and y and z terms. So the center is 0, 0, 0. This thing is, so a squared is 1. That implies certainly that a is 1. But notice, this is equality here. It's not an inequality anymore. So now, this is a sphere of radius 1 centered at 0, 0, 0, and this does not have its interior. This is just the exterior of the sphere, so this is just a hollow ball. Okay, that concludes the lecture on three-dimensional coordinate systems.